We now come to the second oral question. Baroness Northover, on behalf of Lord Scriven. Uh, my Lords, with the permission of my noble friend Lord Scriven and at its request, I beg leave to ask the question standing in his name on the order paper. Minister Lord Parkinson of Whitley Bay. The Prime Minister and the Crown Prince discussed a wide range of measures as outlined on the Gov.uk website. We regularly raise human rights priorities in any areas of concern with the Government of Bahrain, including at senior levels. The Foreign Secretary raised social and justice reforms with the Crown Prince during their meeting on the 17th of June, and the UK continues to engage with the Government of Bahrain to support its reform agenda. My Lord, I thank the noble Lord, but the UK has a close relationship with Bahrain, but is pressed on what it raises on human rights. Now, I flagged to the uh, noble Lord last night the case of human rights defender Dr Alcin Gase, who has a PhD from Manchester University and who was arrested on his return to Bahrain in 2010 and sentenced to life imprisonment for his peaceful opposition to Bahrain's government during the Arab Spring. He's currently on hunger strike. Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International and others have called for his immediate and unconditional release. The UK has never done so. Can the noble Lord tell us whether the government will now do this before it's too late? As the noble lady says, our, our relationship with Bahrain means that we are able to raise uh, cases directly with them. We continue to monitor the, the case of Dr Alsengase. Uh, we've raised these uh, the, the case at a senior level with the Bahraini government and we urge anyone with concerns for a particular case to raise those with the oversight bodies in Bahrain and continue to encourage the oversight bodies to carry out swift and thorough investigations into any such claims. Lord Anderson of Swansea. My Lords, of course there are proper concerns about human rights in Bahrain as indeed there are in all Middle East countries. Would the noble Lord the Minister agree that these concerns should be put in the context of the continuing efforts by Iran to destabilize the country by shipping by propaganda and by shipping vast quantities of arms, including explosive devices to the country, and also with the very positive role which Bahrain has in the Middle East, particularly in respect of the Abraham Accords. Well, my Lords, we, we remain committed to the promotion of universal freedoms and human rights and uh, are more likely to bring about change through engagement, dialogue and cooperation. Our uh, strong relationship with uh, Bahrain has flourished for over 200 years. We cooperate on defence, security, trade and, and regional issues such as those that the Noble Lord mentions. And I sub. My Lords, a year ago this week, the Bahrain's courts upheld the death penalty for Mohammed Ramadan and Hussein Musa. Following commitments made to do so in the other place by the Minister for the Middle East and North Africa, what, rep what representations has Her Majesty's Government made to the Government of Bahrain on the death penalty? Well, the UK remains opposed to the death penalty in all circumstances and all countries as a matter of uh, principle. The Government of Bahrain is, is fully aware that we are firmly opposed to the death penalty uh, and our good relationship allows us to have honest dialogue uh, and raise points on that. We, we raise the matter regularly at both ministerial and official level, publicly and privately, including during the Minister for the Middle East and North Africa's most re recent visit to Bahrain. Lord Barclay of Nathan. Uh, my Lords, I'm sure the Minister would agree with me that it is uh, through the interchange of culture and sport that influence can often be exerted. And Amnesty International have identified the Grand Prix in Bahrain as being a huge event through which we should try to put pressure. Are efforts being made in this direction with, for example, Formula One? Uh, well, I will have to double check the, the, the point the Noble raises about uh, Formula One and uh, write to him to, to confirm that, but he's absolutely right uh, to highlight the role that uh, cultural exchange, sport, music and, uh, and the arts plays uh, in, in our strengthening our relationships and standing up for our, our fundamental values. Lord Collins of Highbury. My Lords, uh, earlier this year I raised with the uh, Noble Lord Lord Ahmed the detention of children in Bahrain following reports of their physical abuse and forced confessions. Uh, can I ask the Noble Lord, the Minister, what response uh, to these, uh, what assessment has the government made uh, to the Bahraini authorities' response to these 
reports of alleged human rights abuses against children and will they make further representations to ensure this does not happen? Lords, yes, if the Liberal Lord bears with me, I do have an answer on that point. Um, we, there's a lot of pages and a lot of information, but I want to make sure the Liberal Lord has, uh, has an answer. Uh, um, we, in response to the recommendations in the Bahrain Independent Commission Inquiry Report and by the UN uh, Convention on the Rights of the Child, Bahrain has undertaken reforms of its juvenile uh, justice system. We've consistently uh, promoted and supported Bahrain in adopting a, a whole system of approach to youth offending from diversion and prevention through to rehabilitation and resettlement uh, of young people. And we welcome the recent uh, ratification uh, by His Majesty the King of the corrective justice law for children and we'll be monitoring its implementation. Anders Bennett of Manor Castle. My Lords, I'm sure the Noble Lord, the Minister, is aware of the All-Party Parliamentary Group on Democracy and Human Rights in the Gulf recent report on the Integrated Activity Fund and the Gulf Strategy Fund, and I declare an interest as an endorsee, uh, which concludes that Her Majesty's Government has been deceptive and misleading about these £50 million in funds, putting the UK at risk of complicity in rights violations in Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. Will the Noble Lord, the Minister, respond to the report, consider its recommendations and tell this House why the government refuses to be transparent about how this money is spent. Well, my Lords, the, the FCDO's international programme and within it the Gulf Strategy Fund is a, is a vital tool in promoting positive change and reforms across the world, including in the Gulf. Um, uh, we now publish an annual summary of the GSF work, work on gov.uk. We won't publish further information where doing so presents risks to our staff, programme suppliers and beneficiaries, or which may hinder our relationships with our international partners and therefore hinder our ability uh, to influence their reform efforts, but we will provide updates on an annual basis. Lord Flight. My Lords, does the government accept informally double standards applying to human rights as regards the Gulf versus the UK? Well, my Lords, if we want to bring about change in the world, we have to engage uh, with those we wish to, she to see improve their records on human rights. We don't shy away from raising human rights concerns with, uh, with other countries, and we uh, make this point very clearly in public and in private. Lord Brown of Ladyton. My Lords, the noble Baroness Lady Northover referred to the plight, the plight of Dr. Alison Gates. 73-year-old Hassan Mushemi is in an identical position. Both are political prisoners, obviously, and have been detained for 10 years for their peaceful political opposition to Bahrain's dictatorship. Both, in fact, participated in an event held in this house in 2010. And in 2012, the Foreign Office stated that they were, and I quote, very disappointed over a decision to uphold their life sentences due to the court's reliance on torture-tainted confessions. Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International and the European Parliament have called for their immediate release. Why has our government failed publicly to call for their release? And is the Noble Lord the Minister willing to do so today? And did the Prime Minister raise our continued disappointment, presumably, at their continued unjustified detention with the Crown Prince when they met? Well, my Lords, we continue to monitor the case of Mr. Mashemi and Dr. Alsingase, uh, and where we have concerns, we have raised them at senior levels with the Bahraini government. Uh, the policy of Her Majesty's government on torture is clear. We do not participate in, solicit, encourage or condone the use of torture or mistreatment for any purpose. We urge all allegations of, of this nature to be reported to the appropriate national oversight body, whose duty it is to carry out a full and independent in investigation. And we will continue to raise concerns about human rights with the government of Bahrain wherever we have them. My Lords, all supplementary questions have been asked. 